So hello, everyone. Welcome to UCTV, A Life for Kids. I'm Tess Crellin from the Peter Underwood Centre at the University of Tasmania. I'm your host today. We've got a really great guest today. Her name is Mary Gill. Um, I'm going to introduce her a little bit later on properly. But just quickly, in case you haven't joined us before, and for those who have, welcome back. Um, how it works with UCTV is I'll be recording. And because of that, your um, your camera and your microphone are disabled. So there's no chance of anyone kind of popping up. It's just me and the, the presenter here on the screen. Uh, we uh, we have shows every single month. So um, once a month, usually around the, the first or second week of the month, on a Monday uh, between 2 and 2.30, we have uh, staff members or uh, students or former students from all around UTAS coming on to talk about things that they're really passionate about. So we've had people come on to talk about volcanoes, um, seabirds, museum exhibits, uh, bugs, eating insects, all kinds of things. And today is, is also a really interesting topic. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later on. Um, also, before we get started, I really would like to acknowledge country um, and acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land. Um, Tasmanian Aboriginal people are our first storytellers and um, we, we acknowledge all elders past, present and emerging. Now, um, I think we're ready to get underway. I'm going to invite to the screen now our presenter for today. Her name is Mary Gill. She is a waste officer at the University of Tasmania. Uh, welcome to the screen, Mary. Welcome to UCTV. Oh, thanks, Jess. Lovely to be here. Uh, it's lovely to have you. Uh, and a few other people have said hello in the, um, the Q&A. Um, someone from South Hobart Primary has said hello. Um, the school, Sassafras Primary, Karen's just let us know that it's grade four, five, and six watching today. So how fantastic. That's just the schools that have said hello and we know that there are others online. Um, but today you're here to talk about recycling. It's also National Recycling Week, Mary. Before we play a video that we've made about um, some of the work you do at the uni, could you just tell us, like, yeah, who are you? What's your job at the uni? Oh, um, yeah, well, my job at the uni is... My title's Waste Officer, but actually my job is to prevent as much stuff as possible from going to landfill because what everyone probably knows is that once stuff goes to landfill, it's wasted. We, it's not available for us to reuse or recycle. It's a resource that's gone. And so at the uni, we, are like many other large organisations, we have things that need to, that aren't used anymore and we need to find a new home for them recycle them or reuse them whatever so that's my job so yeah I look after a lot of bins across a lot of sites but yeah. I also talk to people about um, where things should go should we take things to the tip shop op shop can we reuse them at the uni can we give them to community groups every day is very busy doing a lot of that kind of stuff sometimes actually I feel like a dating agency <laughs> I match up things with people who could reuse them and sometimes that's easy and sometimes that's hard and sometimes it's just incredibly exciting <laughs> yeah if, you, if that's what you feel like you must be a yeah. very busy matchmaker I've seen yeah. you come into our office to talk to us about um, our bins <laughs> and we've, we're, going, we're going to show a video now um, which will, is just one wall at the university it's a recycling yeah. wall but there are many of them all around the state and you're in Lonnie but you've driven down many times to Hobart to us um, it's a big job uh, should we go ahead and play the video so people can see what we're talking about, these recycling walls? Yeah, it's great. They're really exciting. Let's do it. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to play the file now. All right. We'll see you after the video. This is the university's recycling wall. Um, this is a location for staff and students to recycle items that can't be recycled through the yellow topped recycling bin. Our recycling hub is something we have at uni for staff and students, and we have quite a few of them throughout the uni, but there's actually um, a lot of councils throughout Tasmania have them in their council office. So Hobart City Council, Launceston, Burnie, Georgetown. Um, 
think Break a Day Council might have one at St Helens too, but other people have them in their community. There's a really fantastic one down at Dover, it's a community one one, and one at Westbury at the primary school. It looks much like this, sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller, but you can put in all these funny items that can be recycled, it just they can't go in the yellow top bin. Now some other things we collect are batteries. It's really important to recycle batteries. Um, currently only about 5% of batteries within Australia get recycled and that's no good because they go to landfill and there's chemicals in them, there's materials in them that's wasted. It's just such a waste of resource. It's just not good. So we have a collection point for batteries and here you see we have little household batteries but we also can collect things like these ones out of your power tools and these big old ones out of old torches and things. Now, there's other places you can take batteries to as well. Um, I think it's um, supermarkets, you see them there. Um, the big supermarkets, little supermarkets. And it's really fantastic if you can get all the batteries you can from your household into one of these points for recycling. Another thing that we collect here at the uni um, is blister pack packaging from Edison's. These are really problematic because, as many people know, these are made from foil and hard plastic, both of which are individually recyclable, but they can't, because they're stuck together as a composite, they would then have to go to landfill. So by collecting them this in a special program, we send them off to get them recycled. As you can see, this is a very popular program. We have heaps. Often they fall out the door when I open them. Okay. Righto, now um, the skincare packaging collects a whole lot of mostly plastic but some glass packaging in here which are items that can't easily go into your recycling bin. Now plastic items that are this size are actually too small to go into your household recycling bin. So you may not know that your uh, yellow lidded bin at home um, items should be, uh, plastic items, should be larger than this, it's about, about that circle there, um, and they should be no bigger really than a plastic bucket that you have at home. So items should be from about this size uh, down to this kind of size. And that's because the material re recovery facility, or MRF, which is where the items in your yellow lidded bin go to be sorted, um, that's the size of that's the size items that they can manage. So by sending this particular one through to a special program, this item, which is solid chunky plastic, can get recycled. If you're in a community and you'd like to set one of these up yourself, at, um, after this, um, at the end of this session today, we're going to put up a link um, that you can download that information and set one up yourself. It doesn't have to be a big one like this. It could be just a couple of items that you would like to start with. One of the things I find with recycling as well is that people will probably want to recycle, be able to do everything at once. Start small, get something under control, get that working and then make it bigger. And also if you set up one of these, make sure you have enough people to help you do it because it can get tiresome to do it all on your own sometimes. Thanks. Hi everyone. The video is amazing, Mary. You are amazing. You're so passionate, but also so good at just directly telling information and not um, you know, not being scared to speak up about recycling. We're really, I'm really interested to know what everyone thought of the video, what they're doing in terms of recycling, but also you probably have questions and this is a great opportunity to ask someone who knows a lot about all the different areas of Tassie and, and, and as Mary's kind of been explaining to me, it's actually not that complicated. It's actually not that different, but um, please feel free now to shoot through any questions you might have about recycling or starting a recycling wall um, I'll also pop that link in the chat in case anyone wasn't able to access the QR code. 
But we might have a three minute break now um, for you to or send, send in questions. Did you have anything you wanted to say, Mary, before we go to the three minute break? Oh, I just wanted to add in one thing that I forgot is that um, the University of Tas um, have two of our recycling walls are actually um, accessible by the public. Um, we've got about 20, but we have two, and that's the one at Sandy Bay, and that's in the Social Sciences Building access from Churchill Avenue, and our one at our Burnie campus. And so if members of the public want to go there, the, they're available, I think it's from about nine to five, Monday to Friday when we're open. So, yep, so Amazing. people can use those. That's great. And the Sandy Bay one was the one that was in the video. Yes, um, yeah. That's our really that's our really big one. We have a big one, but we actually have littler ones in other places. The Bernie one's the, our tiniest one. Yeah. But very um, busy. Yeah, okay, good to know. Um yep. okay, all right. I'm going to um turn off my video again and, and mute myself and we'll play that three minute screen because I'm really dying to just hear from everyone and hear your questions. So I'll go ahead and share that now. Hi everyone, we've just come back. We're, um, there's so many questions there. There, there. There's 20 questions that have come through, including some of the introductions at the start, which is amazing. Um, we've got 15 minutes left. I reckon we'll be able to get through a lot of them, Mary. Um, now I've written down a list so I can so I remember who's who, but if I get your school name wrong, I'm so sorry. So I was like, I'm reading them out and I'm like Karen from Sassafras or, and I might say instead South Hope, Hobart Primary, we'll see how we go. Okay, so the first question that came through was from um, Rachel from the Gifted Online program, and she asked, how do we know where to send all the material collected? Uh, so the items collected in the recycling wall? Oh, yeah. well, yes. So if, you, if, you would, if you want to start your own, like how okay. do you... Okay, so if you look up the instructions that I've given you, it tells you in there, but Pretty much, so um, I'll just say, for example, we have signed up to various programs for us. So there's a company called TerraCycle. Um, we sign up to free programs there. And what we do is we sign up, um, we have a login with them, we sign up, we collect that item, and then they have given us instructions what we can collect, how to collect it and how to send it back. When we have enough, they'll tell you the minimum amount that you need to send. Sometimes it's like a minimum of, say, seven kilos. Um, and then you box it. Um, and then you go into your um, account, you print out a once only use label that you stick on the top, you go to the post office, Australia Post or a partner in most of the programs we're involved in, we go to the post office, hand it over, and they send it off to them and it goes off to the mainland to be recycled. Uh, and so I use I use a box, um, I use just use old boxes, I reuse the boxes, and send them off like that. Yeah, and so I've joined, yeah, on those instructions, it tells you various people you can um, sign up with. So, yeah, all the information's in there. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I tried, I was going to, I said just before I was going to put the link in the chat. I've disabled, yeah. but I've disabled the chat for everyone's privacy. Um, so <laughs> if for some reason during that 30 seconds when the QR code was up on the screen, if you couldn't get the link to work, you can contact me. I'm My email is on the registration email that you got for this. Yeah. I can send uh, and also that link actually is from Rethink Waste Tasmania, which is a fantastic site. Um, so in a previous life, I worked for them, I set up a lot of this stuff. So that information there is that I wrote either when I work for them or now, it's the same information. So you can go to Rethink Waste Tasmania, look on their resources page in there. I think it's under fact sheet, something like that, how to set one up. And it gives you all the instructions there. Okay, awesome. Right. Um Claire, who is from South Hobart Primary, asks, yep. what do you do with plastic items that are too big? Ah, uh, well, hmm. items that are too big. Plastic items. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm just thinking what would be too big to go in there. And it's probably, there's often big plastic items like um, big bins and stuff like that. Mm. They're problematic. You can, hopefully, you might be able to reuse them, but a lot of things, a plastic item that's too big is probably not actually recyclable. Um, and also it, um, it would be good, Claire, if we had an example of something that was too big um, because often the items that are recyclable are the right size. So, mm. yeah, I can't, sort of can't think. I have seen in wheelie bins people putting other rubbish bins in and they're too um, big. 
and often things like you know plastic those big plastic tubs people put them in and they're all broken and one thing or another and often that plastic isn't recyclable anyway because not all plastic is recyclable unfortunately yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, one of Claire's students Ada has asked a question um, about where do things where are the where do the things that we recycle go and it's a bit different to Rachel's question which was about the TerraCycle program. But, yes, yeah. And it's, it's also linked to Alex's question here around uh, all the items collected via a utas wall actually recycled. Where do they go? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, all right. So we'll make that two answers then. So the items in your recycling bin, you yeah, put them out the front, the truck picks them up, and they take them to one of the three MRFs, Material Recovery Facilities in Tasmania, Hobart, Launceston or Sprayton. And then there they're sorted and they're sorted and they're baled, just like straw bales you see out in the paddock in the country. Is there, everything gets baled. So you see a bale of cardboard, bale of plastic bottles, cans and whatever, and then people buy them. They're a commodity, which is something people buy, just like oil and wheat and large things. There's actually people who work in offices and their job is to buy and sell bales of plastic bottles, which I personally find amazing. But there you go, everyone has to work somewhere. So they get bought and sold by companies who then want to shred them um, and recycle them into something else. So that's where they all go. They just go to a market to someone who wants to buy them because actually recycling and waste management is a business. Um, and that's what everyone needs to remember. It's a business. People do make money out of this as well. And that's that's how it, um, it all works. Now, the, um, the items that we get in our recycling will go to programs that are very well... Um, thought of they've been audited they've been checked we looked into them um, to make sure that we were sure that um, these weren't um, programs that we were sending stuff off and they were sending stuff to landfill so I'm sure that that's um, that is what happens um, uh, one of the things sometimes people ask us will we will we set up a program to collect some little thing um, because some little group wants to do a little thing with it. And we don't tend to do that. We use collect items that go somewhere which have a, a well-constructed stream uh, um, of collection and then of a system that processes the item at the end. So, yeah, we have put a fair bit of effort into looking into these programs and there are um, other people out there who check into these things on our behalf. Yep. Yeah. And which state or country do they usually go to? Oh, well, it depends. So the stuff that in our recycling wall, we send our things, pretty much everything goes to the mainland, uh, plastic-wise. Um, the glass, any um, any glass, or, no, sorry, the um, batteries and e-waste and metal things, items in there all go, are in Tasmania. They get, um, they get, recycled in Tasmania and then but then the elements that they're made in that are separated out would be sold to other parts of the mainland um, and the um, all the plastic items go to the mainland now they have to go to the mainland because we just don't have any facilities in Tasmania and we may not get them because Tasmania is a very small market and even though we produce mountains of waste compared to the many mountains of waste that's required to feed a large factory to keep it going um, we just don't produce enough then some of these items do get sold overseas for recycling um, less of them do than they used to but when it's not like us sending our rubbish overseas for other people to sort if they're sorted here and bailed and then they get and uh, they mail get sent to a factory overseas where they're shredded, melted down and then recycled and then often they come back to Australia to be made into something else. Yeah, so interesting. Thank you. Um, now, Maria, who's from Zian, um, Zian yeah. Primary School, and she's got year four, five and six watching. Hi, guys. Um, she's asked, can we make one for our town? Yes, definitely. And that would be fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Maria, we've made a lot of our ones at the university um, are actually made from old filing cabinets. The one in the video is our big one, which was donated by Hobart City Council. But all the others are old filing cabinets and so they make fantastic drawers. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. That would be great. 
Definitely. And the photo that's behind you, Mary, I took just before um, this session started. I ran upstairs to a, um, our recycling wall in the accommodation. And it's, yeah, as you can see, it's just made out of old yeah. recycling um, <laughs> units. It's so good. You can just pull out the drawers and just put stuff in. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, now, I'm just, go I'm just seeing if I've missed anyone. There's a few from an anonymous attendee, um, which I'll read out. So they've asked, um, what made you get into recycling, Mary? <laughs> well actually well I've always actually I've always been a recycler when I was a little girl which I can tell you is quite a long time ago mm -hmm. my favorite trip with my dad was going into the tip um and because we always used to bring or it was always called a tip then nowadays we try and call them a, tra a wage transfer station or whatever and my favorite thing I love going with him because I always got to bring something home that was broken and then he'd help me fix it so um, I've always loved that sort of thing we're just that kind of family but I got into this um, in older life simply because I was doing a job and I was a bit bored and I saw a job working in recycling and I thought you know that looks like interesting fun I know a bit about recycling and then and and I'm a bit chatty and um, I really love chatting to kids. I'd done a few jobs where I got talking to kids in schools about all sorts of other things. Um, yeah, and so I've just got into it and I've really loved it. I've been in now for sort of more than 10 years working that way, but yeah. I feel I've been doing it forever. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Anyone who wants to work in waste is endlessly interesting, fascinating. Lots of girls work in waste. Yeah. Everyone, just, just, just so you know, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm. Um, Claire from South Hobart Primary has asked, has put forward Alexander's question from year two. So Alexander asks, what do you do with boxes that you can't use? Ah, so I guess you mean cardboard boxes? I think, I think, I think yeah. Yeah, that's my reading. Feel yeah, 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 yeah. Cardboard yeah. boxes are fantastic because they can be recycled a lot. So, yeah, cardboard boxes, um, flatten them. If you're a superstar recycler, you peel off any sticky tape and plastic that's on them. It doesn't matter too much if you don't, but you mu it's much better if you do. And then flatten them nice and flat, put them in your recycling bin, or if you haven't got a recycling bin, drop them off in a cardboard bin at the waste transfer stations and stuff. If you flatten them, um, and also make sure you take out any plastic bags, any plastic wrap, polystyrene, anything else, because that will contaminate it and that will make it really hard to be recycled. And stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. So cardboard boxes are fantastic because they can be recycled multiple times. Yeah. Um, the question just before that was from the anonymous attendee about what made you get into recycling. They've just let us know that the question was from Sassy. So thanks for that question, Sassy. Um, <laughs> we're nearly out of time. There's only two minutes left. It's gone so quickly. Um, there's still a lot of questions in there. Um, I don't know if you want to have a quick little look, Mary. I've been doing this the last few episodes and see if there's one in particular that you want to answer. Okay, hang on. Uh, oh, how do you organise your own house? Okay, so one that actually... I find at my house, I just have an area in my kitchen. Um, I have a box for my recycling inside and my waste and my food scraps. And I've done this even when my kids are little, they're grown-ups now. And so what I've found is instead of everyone just taking stuff straight to the wheelie bin outside, we had a station inside. And I actually used a couple of old buckets that weren't any good for anything else anymore. Um, and then you could put all the items in there and then you could easily see if the wrong thing was in there when you went to tip it into the um, wheelie bin. And I used to find that having... Um, I used to actually find re uh, managing the waste and getting it sorted at home um, just helped everything else be organised too. So I did um, did that sort of stuff. Oh, plastic that's too small. Plastic that's too small has to go in the general waste bin. I'm really sorry. Plastic that's too small, it would be really good if nobody made it and it would be really good if nobody bought it. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, little stuff that's too small has to go in the general waste bin. Thanks for that question, Joseph. Yeah, primary. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I actually find most people, someone here who does the best recycling, I actually find most people recycle really well. Often they make a mistake simply because they've got the wrong information. So most people actually do um, a really, really good job. Um, uh, batteries, batteries go to uh, transfer station and then there's a specialist 
uh, a specialist company who collect them and they do all sorts of really scary things with all the nasty chemicals in there. You can tell I'm not terribly technological when it comes to batteries. Uh, and then they separate the chemicals and the metal and they reuse them for the things that they, they can be used for. Yeah, and that question was from em Emil, uh, Emil, it might yeah. be Emily, um, Emil, yeah. Yeah, and opening, emptying the recycling wall. I used to empty one in like Launceston City Council. I had to empty it twice a week. I used to get two and a half tonnes of stuff out of that one recycling wall in every year. Every two year. And a, every, yeah, two and a half tonnes. But um, I look after a little one in my community now and we only get, um, you know, about 50 kilos, but it's still stuff that yeah. it's getting reused and recycled. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, thanks for that question. Yeah, thanks, yep. Will. So, how, yep. so for that huge one that you used to do, how yep. often did you have to empty it? I think is Will's uh, two, Yeah, twice a week. And there were two of us um, because the batteries were really heavy. We yeah. used to, we had a ton of batteries, like a thousand kilos of batteries. Wow. That was so coming and that would be really heavy. And so, yeah. 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 Mm. Fantastic. Um, there's, thank you for everyone that's sending questions. Sorry if we didn't get to answer it. We're, we're out of time. But just quickly, someone had asked a question about um, they joined a little bit late and they said, like, how can we recycle in schools? Oh, Recycling in schools, it's, it can be tricky because often schools aren't set up for recycling. So number one, um, you can re always recycle paper because all the schools in Tasmania have a contract with the same contractor to collect your white paper. So all your paper can get recycled. If you live in a town that um, and you have the recycling truck go by, um, you could organise, you could probably organise to get yourselves a wheelie bin, but your council might give you one for free a couple of them do but most of them don't so you might have to pay for that but then again paying for it is probably a good thing because you're getting your recycling gets recycled otherwise it all goes into um, the general waste bin so what you actually have to do you have to make friends with the school business manager um, talk to your school business manager talk to them about who manages our waste how much do we pay and let's see if it can, we can reduce the cost for our waste to landfill because um, we can send some to recycling a lot of that's much cheaper than going to landfill so yeah you've got to be uh, and they you already might have a contract um, from someone that so everything goes to landfill and so the school business manager is the person you have to talk to in the first instance but I find generally they're they really like to save money and they really like to work with their students about this kind of stuff. So you talk to them. Don't be scared. Yeah, fantastic. And Mary, um, you've given some really good information with the resource that we put up on the QR code and you've given people the web address. But if if they did want to chat to you a bit more about the yep. work at UTAS and, and how it could be implemented in schools or if some students wanted to come and meet you in person or see a, a wall, um, is that possible? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm happy for them. Um, you do you have contacts for yourself through this um, thing? Yeah, so maybe contact Tess and she'll put you on to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. always very happy to come and chat to kids. That's yeah. the big kids I talk to at uni aren't nearly as interesting as younger kids. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and you've had school groups come through um, to look at the wall, haven't you, at different locations around the state? At oh, yes, Pro possibly. Yes, yes. probably. Yeah, mm -hmm. amazing. So. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, well, we it's time to finish, unfortunately. Thank you so much, everyone that has watched. And thank you, Mary. Um, it was great doing this with you. Thank you for giving up your time, letting me tag along and film you doing things. Uh, we're back next month um, with another episode. It's the second week of December. No, sorry, the first week of December on the 4th of uh, December. So please register again if you're interested in watching and share, share details of our show with anyone um, around schools in Tasmania. But that's it for today. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Bye. Bye.